Thank you. So we're going to talk about, I was planning to show some uh, live demos, so have to get some archive piece of technology for that. Uh, thank you for coming to the talk. We are going to talk about forging trusts in Active Directory environment for detection. This is the most blue talk ever I have given. So I'm uh, basically a red teamer, and this is my attempt to deceive my own community. Uh, so let's get started. A couple of things about me before we begin. I am a hacker, of course. I speak at a lot of conferences, train there. I'm currently associated with Pentester Academy, the guys behind. We are the guys behind attackdefense.com, Pentester Academy, Security Tube. You can find me on Twitter, uh, on, with as nickel underscore m i w t a blog at lab of a penetration tester dot com I maintain two open source toolkits for red teamers I'm generally interested in breaking into machines environments where of course I have the permission to do so new methodologies to attack systems uh, I've been recently working a lot on how to avoid detections in active directory attacks uh, especially with the uh, with so many vendors claiming to be uh, the ones who can stop domain dominance attacks i spoke last year at brucon about advanced threat analytics that's a microsoft tool which detects active directory attacks and that slowly uh, brought me to uh, uh, another area of detections that's deception uh, I evaluated like six or seven industry grade or enterprise grade offerings in last couple of months, not couple of months, last six months, found out that there is a severe lack of open source projects which can uh, provide you deception capabilities, right? That is what this talk is about. Uh, I've previously spoken at DEF CON, Black Hat, et cetera, of course at Brucon, as I said. So a uh, quote from Niccolo Machiavelli that never attempt to win by force what can be won by deception. And he also says that I am the brightest scholar he has ever read. Both are misquotes. So I was looking for quotes about deception which I can put on the introduction slide. And this is a misquote attributed to Machiavelli, which I thought uh, goes really good with the persona he has. So uh, what is deception? For red teamers, deception is something which we have been using for long, right? Uh, we have been deceiving or using decoys against unsuspecting users in form of malicious attachments. We trick users to click on links, open attachments, uh, once we are inside an environment or a network, we use privileges of other users to avoid getting detected. We use jump boxes, pivoting, uh, so that we can deceive any detection mechanism in that environment or in that network uh, so as to remain hidden, right? Uh, that's how uh, red teamers have been using deception a lot. For example, human interface devices. I have personally worked, worked quite a lot on human interface devices. You hide such device inside a mouse, a keyboard, a USB toy, uh, drop them in parking lots, send them as gifts to unsuspecting users, do whatsoever, and you would be surprised by how many users and how, uh, connect that machine to their work, uh, connect that toy or decoy to their work machines, right? Uh, that is how uh, red teamers or attackers have been using deception a lot. Blue teamers or defenders have been lagging, lagging behind when it comes to using deception. The best open source uh, solution which I have seen or uh, technique which I have seen when it comes to def uh, defense is to leave honey credentials, honey users or honey tokens. That is you leave credentials of a user in memory on a box or on boxes and hope that if an attacker uses that, you get an alert, which means that it is an intrusion, it's an anomaly, right? So that's how the uh, current state of deception, as far as, far, as far as I know, is for red teamers and blue teamers. Now, oh, how does the attackers work? Deception, 
There have been so many examples I could uh, speak like whole day of how deception has been used for so long from Hannibal to US Army and 40s Russians uh, for past few years have been using this to deceive their adversaries. Now, deception is mostly a psychology thing, right? You have to play with the mind of your enemy or your rival. Uh, how does red teamers, as an experienced red teamer, I can tell you that when we go in into a network, we have something which is called the illusory superiority. That is, we think that defenders are fool. That's not me personally. I respect blue teamers a lot, especially from the time I've been maintaining a couple of labs. But that's how red teamers go in, right? With a sense of superiority. Uh, the sexiness attached with attack also adds up to it, right? Defending is not really considered cool. It's the attack part which is considered, yes, that's, that's something which I want to be when I grow up. So uh, we target that part, right? We target the attacker's capability or the mentality of going for, other than this, the going for the lowest hanging fruit. That's what we have been taught all the time, right? You go in a network, go for the lowest hanging fruit, and you would be good. Then you can later on brag about getting a domain admin in half an hour on your blog post. That's how most of the red team works, right? So, uh, and with this, uh, with the advent of Mimikatz, and other Active Directory specific tools. Now the domain admin is one such uh, coveted prize which everyone wants, even if that is not part of their original operations, right? So we target, we uh, get all of this thought process of an attacker and then we plan a a one or a couple of simple decoys which can be used to trip an attacker or to just raise some alerts. So in Active Directory, uh, adversaries mostly implement deception by, as I said, pivoting and replaying credentials. Uh, defenders try to counter it by injecting fake or deck-like threats, which when used raise an alert. But in, in case of Active di Directory, it is not something which we need to be limited to, right? If we have a look at this, obligatory kill chain diagram, we can see that always the attack phase starts with recon or information gathering or enumeration. Why don't we try to catch an attacker during the enumeration phase, right? So we'll all, we have a look at some of the techniques which can be used for different objects for enumeration phase and of course for the later movement part or the domain dominance part. So what, what could be the properties of a decoy? What are the properties of a good decoy? Uh, it should be desirable enough for an attacker so that he or she enumerates the object. Should be easily configurable. Uh, there should be no configuration change required on endpoints. No agent should be required on endpoints, right? I've seen enough of it. Endpoint, uh, agents on endpoints themselves expose a new attack surface. And uh, most importantly, uh, a decoy should not be triggered by normal admin activity. A false a large number of false positives and you kill a good detection mechanism. Now when I was uh, researching or working on this particular part, point four was the most difficult thing to achieve. Right? Something, when you're talking about enumeration, that is, that mixes really well. An attacker's enumeration or an adversary's enumeration mixes really well with the normal network traffic or the normal admin activity. Right? So how do we separate it, the, the adversary's enumeration, how do we separate it from normal admin activity? That was the most difficult part. So uh, I'm sorry about this meme. I really wanted to put it on, the, on the, one of the slides. So what we are going to do is we are going to forge some objects like users, computers, forests, to see if we can trick a user, uh, an adversary, in spending more time, right? Even if we cannot stop an adversary because this is not a blocking thing, we can at least increase the costs for them in terms of time, right? Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use built-in tools like Active Directory module 
from Microsoft, which comes on your domain controller by default, group policy, and built-in logging mechanism to do something hopefully interesting. So let's start with the enumeration phase and user objects. So when an adversary is enumerating or an, or an attacker is enumerating an Active Directory environment, what is that they are looking for in user objects? Uh, users whose password do not expire, users who are trusted for delegation, constrained and constrained both of it, users which have interesting SPN set, right, so that they can Kerber host it, uh, passwords in description field, that's also very interesting, users who are member of high privileged groups, domain admins, right, as I said, that is something very coveted, users who have interesting ACLs as well. Now, we can turn on uh, this particular group policy setting uh, in under advanced audit policy configuration, DS access, which logs a 4662 directory service access whenever a directory object is accessed. Now, after enabling this, we can configure each and every object as per our choice to, uh, so that a 4662 is logged when a particular uh, right is used against that object when something particular is done against that object, right? So uh, a quick look at how auditing looks like. Um, access mask rights for which auditing is done. Uh, wh what's that right? What could be that right? Read property, read DACL, uh, read USC value, uh, read an obscure property. Uh, that's in case of the user objects. Or in fact, like, let's say in case of groups, it could be read group membership. In case of forests, it could be uh, read trusted forests. So these are the different rights for which we can turn on auditing. Sorry, then state of the trustees for which you can turn on auditing. Everyone is the all encompassing SID, and then there could be specific users as well. Then the last two ones, the bull ones, uh, would you like auditing to be turned on on success or failure? So with that, we can create a user with some interesting flags. Now auditing can be set, as I said, for some rights. What rights are usually useful? Generic read, that is if someone reads any property, right? Then read control, if someone reads a DACL, specific rights. Uh, of generally for a bit obscure one, to avoid very verbose logging, logging, right? For example, the one written here, X500 unique identifier, that's pretty much obscure one, but it is there for all the Active Directory objects. Now, how do we automate this, right? Uh, how do we automate creating an attractive user and enabling logging for it? So I wrote a, a PowerShell module called Deploy Deception, which is a wrapper around the Active Directory module, which can be used to create different types of decoy objects to turn on auditing. So right now it's not up, but it would be available on my GitHub account. So that packs a lot of interesting research. It uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to learn behavior of adversaries, and then it uses blockchain to compare that uh, with a database of 10 million endpoints where I've been running this. Right? Uh, of course. <laughs> so this is how we use it. We can simply create a decoy user and name it, make it part of an interesting group later if you want. For example, in this case, we create a user called simply user manager, which has the flag set password never expires. You create it. Uh, please keep in mind that you are creating an actual object. When we run this, we are creating an actual object on the domain controller. So you may like to record changes or whatever documentation your organization follows, you use that for it. Now one, once that is created, uh, for example, these are some of the commands which generally adversaries use to enumerate your environment. This gets the one we created just now, this user called user manager. That logs a 4662 for all of these. Right, which is not desirable, because that also includes some of our normal admin activity, right? And this is where we start looking for ways to decrease the verbosity. So for example, uh, the X500 unique identifier, 
that's a property which is available for all the uh, Active Directory objects. But none of the tools which we have seen or uh, see already here, or none of the methods, log it unless you deliberately list all the properties of the Active Directory object of that particular object, which makes it quite usable. Right. Uh, now you may like to notice that the LDAP-based tools like PowerView or the uh, the one from Sys Internals, AD Explorer, these are the tools which extract much more information than, let's say, NAT or WMI-based tools, or the find user scripts and context query. So uh, these tools are the ones which we are going to target for uh, decreasing the verbose logging, right? These are the ones which may result in false positives if, if the deployment is not smart enough. So. I cannot still connect to my RDP box though, so I'm going to show you a video which I recorded this morning. I'm, I'm a big fan of live demonstrations and thankfully I have the videos today, otherwise I would never have that as well. So do I have the voice turned off? Good. Is this really visible? Yes? Good. So we are on a domain controller right now. That's uh, uh, the domain controller in my lab. We load up the module or the script, and then we create uh, a user, a simple decoy user, right? That decoy user does not have any special logging turned on. So I turn on the logging. Let me uh, skip that a bit. I turn on the logging. Then I go to, this is the attacker's machine. We enumerate users using different tools. And you can see that even with, uh, without any, if we are not using any verbose, uh, sorry, if you are not suppressing any logging, even a net user would, uh, would fire this log. So we do something better. What's that? Okay. Now we create a, a, a user which has a logging enabled only when an obscure property is read, right? This one. So we create this particular user. Right? Now we are going to enumerate the users on this, uh, uh, in this domain. So we do the enumeration using NAT, WMI, uh, PowerView, the Active Directory module which Microsoft provides you. Uh, we do enumeration using all of them. Uh, you may like to notice that if I have shown that here, that right now there is no log when normal attributes are read, right? But as soon as we, we run a tool which reads all of the attributes, for example, let's say PowerView, or we read all properties using the AD module, as soon as we do that, there is a log. So now I run uh, get net user from PowerView. We get a list of users, and there is a 4662 here, right? So that's, why, that's how we can make tools which are reading things which are not generally not required for system administration stand out. Now, this is good, but still there are chances that we do not uh, we d uh, get these logs initiated or get logged even when the normal system activity was being done or there was an asset management system which was looking at all the properties. So to avoid that scenario, okay, we can turn logging on for some really interesting things. As we saw earlier, when someone reads tackle, 
the uh, DACL, that is the security uh, based, the, the ACL, that is the access control list, which controls the security, that is not read in normal scenarios, right? Which makes logging a bit less verbose, but very much accurate. Now this was about normal users. We can do the same thing with computer objects as well, right? That is, we do have computer objects. We can create them. Those of you who are uh, unaware of that, we can create any number of computer objects when it comes to Active Directory Network. It need not map to a real computer. But it is always advised to have a, a real computer, uh, to use a real computer as a decoy so that if someone is trying to figure out if you're using decoys in your, en in your environment, your decoys do not stand out. So what are, the, uh, what are the properties which attackers are looking into computers? Older operating systems, of course, interesting SPNs, uh, delegation settings, membership of higher privilege groups like domain controllers, etc. cetera. Uh, quite similar to what we have done with users, we can use or we can create decoy computers as well. Uh, properties could be obscure ones like unique uh, X500 unique identifier or anything else. Uh, if you would like to experiment with it, you can use DC Shadow from Mimikatz, which can, which allows you to modify the schema of, of your uh, domain to make a, uh, make a computer look like a domain controller. That's not very stable in my testing, so that's why they, I've not included it in the, in the module but that is also usable. I, I played with it somewhat. Sometimes it may break authentication. That's, that's my feeling is that's not what I found out. So that's, that's why it's not included yet. Next comes the groups. So we are going through different types of objects in the enumeration phase, right? We started with users, computers, now come groups. Uh, groups, of course, are also interesting. We can have decoy groups, which uh, log whenever an obscure property is read. Uh, we can make a group part of another interesting groups. For example, group can be a member of the domain admins, and then you can have that particular group, me other member uh, users as well. Uh, so for example, if I create, run this particular command, what we are doing here, we are creating a group called forest admins, uh, which has members, just one member called slave user, and then we add this particular group to the DNS, DNS admins group, right? So now if someone enumerates the groups in your environment, they would be a 4662. If you want to suppress it a bit, then go for a good, a good property like X500 unique identifier, something like this. What, what this command does, a log is created only when the group membership is right, not the group name. So you can experiment with it, depending on the type of logs you want in your environment. So, I think I have a, a, a quick video for this as well. This is users and computers, so, I think uh, we should be fine with closing this. So we create a group called forest admins. Uh, and the logging is enabled only when someone reads the decal of that particular group. And then we go to the attacker's machine, enumerate the groups. Uh, using three different tools, okay. So there is no logging because we are right now looking for a log only when someone uh, lists the membership.
uh, for the decal, sorry. So here, when we read all the properties, which includes the decal, only in that case, a log was created. So which, which makes it quite usable, even in a fairly use, used, uh, fairly large environment, right? So that you have less, less number of false positives or unnecessary verbose logging. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we have a 4662 here. And then we can also do quite similar, uh, quite similarly, we can create a log when uh, the group membership is read and not, let's say, even the decal. So we can simply skip that part. Now, this is, this was about the enumeration part, right? We can play with it. You can have uh, groups, OUs, I think I have missed the OU part here. Oh, it's right here. You can different organizational units as well. You can fairly create an organizational unit which has some users. You can create groups which have multiple users. And the level of logging you have for each object can be decided, right? You have member, uh, you, let's say you have uh, a 4662 when the group membership is read, then out of four group members, you have in logging enabled on just one of them. When decal is uh, read, so that can be used to devise a quite interesting strategy for detecting enumeration-based attacks. But uh, we are not limited to enumeration, of course. If you want, we can, once again, without any additional tools, etc., we can have, uh, we can detect later movement as well. Now, for example, what an attacker would be interested in once they uh, escalated their privileges in the domain or they want to escalate their privileges. We can actually have users to be the part of domain admins group, actual users, and then we can set or restrict their logon to a non-existent machine, right, or just the domain controller. So what happens when we do this? Uh, this means that even if one of your domain admins, your decoy domain admins get owned or its password gets leaked or somehow the credentials are stolen, that user cannot still be abused on any of the machines in your network. And you will, and as soon as someone wants to try that or use that, you will have a log, right? So uh, uh, two ways right now which I, I can think of is one, we restrict the logon. Second, we deny the logon to the user at all. So when someone enumerates it, the user would uh, genuinely appear to be a part of the domain admins group, but when they try to use it, they cannot log on. Uh, this needs a bit of different logging enabled. So let me show you that as well. Okay, not this one. So here we are creating a decoy user called DAC DA, which would be part of the domain admins group. <coughs> and we are denying logon to that user here, right? Uh, no 4662 right now for this, of course. Now we just make sure that if someone is enumerating the domain admins group, is our DAC DA user actually a part of the domain admin membership, group membership? So here you can see the user is now an actual domain admin, but we have restricted its logons. Uh, we, can, we are not allowing it, we're denying logon to that particular user. So let's say if the user's credentials get compromised in clear text, and someone would like to log in using the credentials of that particular domain admin, uh, it would not be possible right? Because we have a logon denied to that particular user. 
And here we will have a 4768, which clearly shows the IP address, et cetera, and the user which someone wanted to abuse, right? And this, of course, does not work only for the clear text credentials. Uh, this is useful for your regular overpass the hash or whatsoever attack. If you use this in any attack which needs communication with the DC, which means all of the authentication-based attacks, then it will not work. Uh, this is an example of if we set the logon to a non-existent workstation, right? So here you can see the logon workstation for that particular user. We are recreating the DAG DA that's non-existent. There is no such machine here in the target domain. So once we create that, uh, we go to the attacker machine. Try, try the same thing which we saw, and the message or the error would exactly be the same, and we will have a 4768 in the logs. Write an audit failure 4768. It's right there, quite detectable. Now, if you would like to use anything like, let's say, overpass the hash from Mimikatz, so that's the NTLM hash of the, of the DAC DA, which we just used, uh, which we are just going to use. Uh, in case of uh, tools like Mimikatz, you won't even get that it, it, there is a logon restriction. That is, if the hash gets leaked, not the clear text credential. In such a case, you wouldn't, won't even get a message. It would simply be an access denied, which makes it more interesting for you. So this process, which opens up this PowerShell console, it is supposedly running with the privileges of DAG DA, but unless you try to access a resource, the privileges are not assigned to this particular process or the, to that, that particular session. Now if we go and uh, have a look at the logs here, there is another 4768 here for DAG DA from the target machine zero cross, from the attacker's machine 0 0.13, right? So that was that is how we can use high privilege users, right? This is, in in my opinion, there could be ways around, and that's that's where the community input is required. In my testing, there is no way around to to bypass this restriction of denying logon or having a, a restricted workstation, right? Which makes it quite interesting and useful. Okay. Now, another very interesting uh, opportunity or technique is to have a master and slave user. That is something which attackers are generally also interested in, right? Having a look at those users which have permissions over any other user. You can enumerate this information without having any special privileges in the environment. And then once you have acquired that particular knowledge, you may like to go after a user which has escalated or good privileges or full control uh, permissions like that on another user. Uh, now, how can we do that? Uh, there are different um, techniques of uh, employing this particular thing. We can create uh, a new slave and master pair, both of them being decoy users, both of them ag aggressively logging any enumeration, or we can create uh, an existing user. We can, we can make an existing user part of a master of a, of a new slave user, right? Uh, we can also assign uh, an SPN to, to a new slave user, whatever we want. There are different options which we can use, right? So what we are doing right now here is we create a, a user called master and a user called slave. Then, uh, the, then in the third command, the master user is provided full control no, in the second command, sorry, master is provided full control over the slave user, and in the third one, we turn on the logging. Uh, this is, uh, you may like to notice that the write which we are looking for is write decal. That is, if the master uses its privileges to make any changes to the ACL of the slave, right? No enumeration would trigger that, just when any changes are made to the slave user. So we, let's have a look at this. So 
So we create a user called slave user, quite medieval terminology, but that works. So uh, that's our slave user. Uh, and here we are and uh, creating the decoy for an existing user called user1. That is, we are providing full more permission. Uh, we are creating a decoy that whenever user1 modifies ACL of the slave user, we get an alert. That's what we are doing here. Now let's try this. Uh, so this does not get triggered on any type of enumeration, only when, let's say, you modify the decal of the slave. We are adding a new user with full rights on slave users, so now we should have an alert there. Uh, that user one has modified the decal. See there, right there, right DAC? That's what the right decal is. Right. Uh, we can also create when when it comes to uh, something. I think there's not on the in the video for uh, high privileged privileged rights like let's say DC sync rights as well. That that is also what the tool has right now. Uh, we can also s specify as I said existing users. So for example, when I was testing the enterprise offerings for for Active Directory deception. Many of them allow you to create a honey user or a decoy user which you can track, whose use you can track, quite similar to what we are doing here. So we can include that as well right here. For your decoy user, you can set that particular user as a principal. If someone uses that particular user to, let's say, enumerate your environment or access any other uh, user, we can have a log here. Right. Next is when we talk about trusts in Active Directory, we, uh, we have seen what the domain trusts between users, computers, groups, uh, then forest comes as well. Unfortunately, I could not find out a way to automate this. Right, so right now what we have is you have to have a real machine as a forest. When it comes to forest, there are so many opportunities which you can have because the trusts between forests could be really segregated. For example, what we can have is a decoy forest which is full of users, computers, probably some of them decoy ones or the real ones that depends on your deployment technique. Now, you use selective authentication between your current forest and the decoy forest. You allow enumeration of users and computers on that particular forest, but no access to any other machine at all. Right, so that is what, uh, that is how we can use a forest as a decoy here. There is a bi-directional trust. You have, you can see everything in the in the decoy forest. All the users, all the domain controllers, all the computers, like just like a normal forest. But you cannot access any resource. As soon as you try to access a resource, there would be a log. And how do we achieve that? Using selective authentication. Once again, right now that is, uh, I could not automate it. So that needs a bit of setup. So if I run this now. So we run this from our current forest to check if there is a, an existing trust. We find out that there is a trusted bidirectional trust forest called uh, wrap.local. We check if we can enumerate users in wrap.local. Of course, we can. Then we check if we can enumerate computers on, on wrap.local. So just two computers for now. So we found out that there is the DC and another machine here called Wrap Desktop. Now let's say we would like to access resources or check 
resources. So the, so the example is quite simple. We simply want to see if we can browse shares on that particular machine. So of course not. So we can extract all of the information, get fantastically logged, but still cannot access any resource there. Right, so that's, that's how it works when it comes to forest trusts. Right, so that was some of the use cases of how we can deploy deception using open source. Now, how do red teamers identify deception, right? Uh, once again, having evaluated many of the enterprise solutions, there are some of the things which stand out when you uh, see deception for the first time, right? For example, these are some of the properties for a user object. For example, object said, that's a property which, oh, if I could show you that. Oh, no, I cannot. So there are properties like object said, last logon, last logon timestamp, these are for the users. Logon count, when the user was created, bad password count. Uh, these can be used to spot a particular uh, uh, decoy. For example, what's object said? Every object in a domain has its own SID, security identifier, which is the domain SID dash rid of the object. There are many, I, of course I've signed NDAs while trying this stuff out, so no screenshots and I cannot name that, but there are deception solutions, the best ones, which use their own object SIDs. When they create the decoy object, if it's not a real object, they have a mismatch with the domain SID. So that can be used to spot one. So this is, this is a tip, right, for the red teamers. If you find, if you enumerate an environment and it looks too good to be true, make time, uh, take some time to enumerate these things as well. Last log on, right? If any one of you have ever used uh, an open source project called uh, Honeybuster, right? That's what Honeybuster looks for. Last logon count and last logon timestamp. If there is a user, and that makes sense, if there is a user in the domain which has a logon count of zero, then you can, with much confidence, mark that as a honey pot or a honey account, right? A user without a logon does not sound good. A user without a bad password count does not sound good as well. Do you think there would be any user in a domain which would not have at least once fat fingered their password? Generally not. So that's what we are looking for, right? Users who have never been used would definitely stand out without a logon count, without a last logon timestamp, without a bad password, etc. Now, not only that, some enterprise solutions also fill up all the properties to avoid that particular stuff, right? If you look up uh, properties or attributes of any real Active Directory object, there would be a large number of properties which not will ever be filled, right? Because all the properties are never required at the same time. So what you do, uh, sorry, what the vendors did was to start filling up all the things. I've reported a couple of things to some vendors and that's, that's the solution at least a couple of them came up with. Fill up stuff with whatever properties, well, all the properties with whatever information they can think of. Some of them tried to read information from actual objects and fill that up in the decoy objects, which sounds good, but was not really practical because it was taking a lot of time and there were read logs being left in the Active Directory environment. Uh, now, how do you compare? I say here to compare, in the last point, compare with the known actual objects. Now, imagine that you have, you are a red teamer, you are doing really good in an environment, ready with your report and to brag about it, the domain admin privileges you have. Now, how would you spot, or how would you ensure that your basic object for which with you would like to compare other objects is a real one? A very useful option is to look for the domain controller. If you have a foothold machine, or it's an assume breach scenario, that is if you are inside a domain environment, you can always use uh, look for the environment variable logon server, 
which would always be, if you're using Active Directory credential, would always be your domain controller. So list the properties of your domain controller and then match it with this objects which you think are decoy ones, right? Works perfectly, works like a charm. <clears throat> or you can also use your own computer's properties. That is also an option all the time. Also one thing is if you use WMI for enumeration, right? If you can uh, figure out the associations which WMI classes have, then that is the best bet for enumeration. Better than LDAP, better than SAMR, which is used by net.exe. Uh, minimum detection, uh, I've tested, as I said, six or seven of them, seven. Uh, three of the decoy, uh, three of the deception mechanisms could not take into account enumeration using WMI. So they would be injecting decoy objects on your desktop, uh, in your, uh, on your own machine, uh, which is part of the domain. But if you run enumeration using WMI, the decoy objects simply show, uh, fail to show up, right? So please use WMI if you want uh, not to get caught. So, uh, how do we avoid deception? We need to change, as red teamers, we need to change our approach to avoid detection by, by at least lame deception, right? Uh, please, please stop going for the lowest hanging fruit, right? I also like to have visitors comment on my blog post that you're awesome. Uh, I also like to brag about getting domain admin privileges under an R, right? But please try to avoid that. Domain admin privileges are a lowest hanging fruit. Once again, if it looks like it is too good to be true, in, in your very first enumeration, you can find out that there is an environment where with, uh, like 50% of the users are domain admin. I mean, that could be true as well. But if you find that out, then uh, put your detective cap on. First, uh, just make sure that the objects or the users you are looking at are not the fake ones, are not the decoy ones. Uh, avoid automated tools, right? I, I don't want to name a tool, but of course there are so many interesting tools which keep coming out, which, uh, for example, there was a tool released last year by, uh, the name slips me. So what the tool GoFetch, the, the, I remember the name of the tool, what GoFetch does, it takes the path uh, created by, identified by Bloodhound and would follow that and provide you automated domain takeover, right? Any tool which provides you automated domain takeover, and I'm specifically talk talking about red teamers, not penetration tests, you are fine leaving, uh, leaving your footprint everywhere in a penetration test, but red teamers, please do not use automated domain takeover tools. They leave logs and fingerprint everywhere. And if you ever encounter a blue team worth their salt, you would be gone for good. It would, it would be, it's so embarrassing. I've been there, right? If you get caught during a red team engagement, that's uh, embarrassing. Once again, I've been urging this, spe specifically during my ATA talks and in my trainings, please avoid the urge to go for the domain admin. It does make things simpler, but also, it's like uh, what, bringing a tank to a knife fight, right? It's not required, looks cool but generally not required. If you can uh, avoid DA, then the, that's better. Now, how do blue teams avoid identification, right? How do they make their uh, decoys are much more believable? One, use actual AD objects, which my, my machine learning uh, AI enabled tool does. That is, it uses actual objects, which makes detection right, like really, really uh, not easy to do. Uh, for user decoys, it is advised if we can create a logon timestamp, at least one logon. If, if you uh, log on that decoy user at least once, that fills up a couple of interesting properties, right? Uh, so I have tried to address that in deploy deception, actually. How? When you create a privileged user who is part of the domain admins group, you can restrict its logon just to the domain controller. And when, while the user gets created, you start a process as that user momentarily. 
So when you start that the process with that particular decoy domain admin momentarily, some of the interesting fields like logon timestamp, last logon, etc., gets populated. Uh, and I, I don't know how, but I forgot the video for that. And then if you run like a tool like Invoke Honeybuster on that, uh, the detection rates would be really, really low. Uh, or, or if someone is manually having uh, a look at that, the user looks perfectly fine. A domain admin with a couple of logons, it's perfectly fine. With zero logons, probably not so good. Uh, you may like to notice that if you use this particular command, uh, as of now, a profile for that particular user would be created on the domain ad on the domain controller, which does not mean anything else other than uh, your C users directory. If you, when you go there, would not look beautiful. And I know system administrators who keep that neat and clean it, uh, uh, keep that neat and clean, right? So that is how we address a problem of getting detection of getting detected. Sorry. Uh, so what else we can expect from it? Uh, the, the biggest challenge right now, once again, when I was testing this, was to fine-tune the logging. Uh, this has not been tested in many enterprise environments. Only my friends have tried this, which were quite happy with that. Uh, the, the problem is inventory management or asset management tools, which keep, information, keep looking for information about computers or users all the time, that may trigger some of the logs, right? So it still needs to mature. The tool is just being released, so still um, needs to mature a lot. So if anyone of you want to get involved but does not know the programming, et cetera, then you test it and drop me an insult. I'll take it happily. I mean, once again, this is the first blue tool which I have ever written, or the, that's the first time I'm releasing it. So you can, you may find out a lot of false positives initially. Uh, also, uh, deploying decoy domain and forest objects, that's on my to-do, right? So that it can be automated. There is no need of creating it manually. So that's something else which I'm going to uh, have a look at. Uh, and finally, a very ambitious goal is to use virtualization. What is that? That is if, uh, if you want, uh, once again, very ambitious, a forest gets deployed uh, automatically, if someone is looking for it, or if you want, with the, on a single click or with a single command, you can deploy an actual forest using containers, let's say, or virtualization. So chances of your decoys getting caught are less, and the amount of time it takes for the deployment gets reduced as well. So uh, what we have seen, we can talk, uh, we can uh, manipulate an adversary's mindset once again of, of the illusionary superiority to show them, to deceive them. You know, what they want to look, we provide them that. And that increases their time in our environment, chances of detection as well. Uh, we de and one thing, I think it's not written on the slides though, we do not need those uh, expensive tools for all of these upcoming things, right? Uh, I wish I could take names. NDAs though, uh, but this uh, comes quite close, sense of, of cool looking web console, but the boarding automated logging or, or the, the logging which is already there, but this is something which many of the tools which you will purchase, they do the exact same thing, but they suck even more than this tool at that. <laughs> so, uh, Oh, okay, yes, that's the last point, actually. If we cleverly use the existing Active Directory tools, uh, we can actually match the deception of the enterprise tools. If we, if, if, if we cannot better it, at least we can match that. So use your security budget to get some good red teamers and pen testers in place of buying yet another appliance with a vulnerable web console, which will ultimately uh, let your organization down. Uh, so I think uh, that would be all. Please leave feedback. Um, I would really like that. Once again, my bluest talk ever. You can follow me, drop me lines, and slides and blog posts would be available on my blog and on my GitHub. That would be all. Thank you.
Questions, please. Questions. Hi. Yeah. If uh, normal admins are unlikely to access certain properties of these objects, aren't attackers also not going to need to list them or access them? Oh, uh, a good question. So the the idea behind and that is why we have different types of loggings here. Uh, in my experience, what attackers are looking for is to gather as much information as they can and then analyze it to find out interesting things. So, uh, in cases of, let's say, you're using an obscure property uh, for, uh, for the logging, chances are really less. Of course, if they are used, uh, uh, going for the minimal enumeration part, let's say just the domain usernames or the, just the computer names, in that case, it won't be logged. Uh, so thanks for the talk. Uh, regarding you adding a domain admin user and then setting a restricted logon for a non-existing workstation, uh, does this come without any other dangers? For example, just setting a non-existent workstation mean that this domain admin account won't possibly uh, use, for example, DC Sync or get SPN tickets or perform LDAP queries on the domain environment? Uh, in my experience, no, because for all of these things, the, the decoy user need to at least once authenticate with the domain controller, and we are restricting even that single authentication at all. So in my testing, uh, it's not possible. But please keep in mind that if you're creating a decoy domain admin and your other domain admin gets owned, then someone can simply remove that restriction. So that possibility is always there. Thank you. Thank you.